Right and large, welcome back to Cross Sustainable no Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. Fabrizio Romano has just confirmed that Arsenal are 100% focused on signing Declan Rice. And after that, they will get the Julian Timber done. Julian Timber is going to be the next signing after Declan Rice. Now, I really thought that we would sign Timber first because the deal was progressing very, very quickly. But the drama and the Rice deal has actually propelled Arsenal to getting it done quicker and faster than the Gillian Timber deal. But the Gillian Timber deal is coming up next as the next done deal after signing Declan, Declan Rice. We're going to be diving into that. Uh, the Moises Kaiser transfer begins in the next 24 hours. Brighton are open to receiving open bids and receiving uh, offers in the next 24 to 48 hours. Man United, Chelsea, and Arsenal are also being reportedly there. Remember, we've talked about Moises Caicedo as one of the players Arsenal wanted alongside Declan Rice, especially if Thomas Partey is going to leave. So, is there a world where we could sign Moises Caicedo and Declan Rice? Big question. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think Arsenal will spend a lot of money uh, on a duo in midfield, but... Listen, we've, we've we've heard from James Bang, we've heard from uh, you know the big journalists that uh, Ateta always wanted Kai Sedo and Declan Rice. So we will be diving into that as well. And my reactions on James Madison signing for Tottenham Hotspur in a forty million pound deal. I have a question for you right here. Do you think James Madison will perform better than Kai Havers at Arsenal? Now we've had the same debate last campaign when we were debating. Um, uh, the signing of 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 of, of Bisuma, and we say will, will Bisuma be better than Thomas Partey? Uh, Partey has been absolutely phenomenal for Arsenal uh, last campaign. But then we also had a, a, the same debate with Gabriel Jesus and Richarlison, and the debate was: Will Richarlison have a more a better impact? than uh, Gabriel Jesus at Arsenal. Will he impact Spurs better than um, Gabriel Jesus will impact Arsenal? I think Jesus has been one of the most influential signings the world has ever seen in the last 10 years. He's been absolutely magnificent for Arsenal. And Richard Lisson scoring one goal against Liverpool, which was equalized um, within seconds, and scoring a couple of outside offside goals. I don't think he is in the conversation with uh with with gabriel laces but anyway in the comment box below let me know do you think james madison will be a better signing for tottenham Hotspur than kai Havers? and therefore do you think james madison should have moved to arsenal and kai Havers moved to uh you know tottenham Hotspur? hit the like button let's get this one to 500 and let's dive into our next signing after signing Declan Rice, because Fabrizio Romano, my man, uh, they're confirming as well. He's working tirelessly. Uh, must be one of the richest guy right, you know, guys right now in June, right? He's making a lot of money at the moment. So he's saying that Arsenal, if um, Arsenal, if what's a uh, one hundred percent on Declan Rice at the moment, right now, and we are working hard to get it done, sealed very, very soon. He says club has submitted official bid to IX for Gillian Timber on Monday, and I expected to advance on that deal. Once Rice signs, Timba is still waiting for Arsenal as he never thought and never considered of playing for any other team uh, this summer apart from Arsenal Football Club. So that is where we are, according to Fabrizio Romano. The next signing is going to be Jerry and Timba. But at the moment, Arsenal put 100% focus on the G uh, on the Declan Rice deal because there was a lot of turmoil. There was a lot of, um, you know, uh, hijacking going on. Now... I think with the Gillian Timber one, it's um it's it's a sensible deal for Arsenal to try to save uh, th the bigger package than you know to try and sign Gillian Timber. Now on Monday when we submitted that second offer, I really thought the deal would be completed by Tuesday or Wednesday because Arsenal, as as far as I remember, and as far as um you know uh, Fabrizio Romano has stated, Arsenal have submitted around 38 guaranteed plus 5 million in terms of uh you know add-ons ix have not rejected that bid but they have not also um they, they've not given us the green light uh to take the player as well so th there might be there must be a few things to be ironed out between arsenal and ix and for me it's always going to be the structure it's always going to be the structure that um causes problems with arsenal and beats look it, it shows that there is, it seems that there is a willingness from Arsenal this summer to splash the cash. The, pr the only problem is the structure of the deals and across how many years we want to splash the cash. But there is a willingness from Arsenal to spend. 
a hundred million on Declan Rice. Table is a bid on the table. Forty-five million for um, rising for to forty-eight for Julian Timba. Bid on the table. Sixty-five million. That is seventy-five million euros, by the way, uh, for Kai Havers. That is also on the table. So there is a willingness to spend money from Arsenal and to spend money early, right? Now, whether doing deals in uh, early in June um, leads for us to overpay, right? Um, as it shows us as um, you know, very ambitious and desperate, uh, that is another debate to be hard. But to be honest, the money is there. Like, this is not one of those summers where we say, ask the red to spend the cash, ask the red to spend 200 million, and we don't see the 200. Right now, Arsenal have made bids in excess of, in excess of 200 million. One and five, 105 for uh, Declan Rice, you have the 65 uh, for Kai Havers, that is already 170. Then you have the 45 uh, for Julian Timba, that takes the, that, that takes, that would take our total spending so far to 100 uh, uh sorry to 215 million pounds in this summer like in a space of uh, two weeks three weeks arsenal spent 215 million on three players so the willingness is there and fabricio says that uh, julian timber is waiting for arsenal i think timber timber knows that he was never and ever right going to be let down by arsenal like we would, we would never let him down. We submitted our first offer the moment he gave us the green light. The moment he said, "I want to sign for you. I, I believe your project is good. I believe your project is um uh, is 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 positive, right?" And uh, you know, we made our first bid, and it was turned down. We didn't disappoint him. We went in with a much big, big, bigger bid that is very close to what uh, you know Ajax are asking for. If you're if you are a player and you have agreed to join a project, and this is how serious they are to sign you, because all the uh, all the sources from uh, the Netherlands are saying the player is excited. The player is really contented with the fact that Arsenal are really showing a lot of seriousness in the deal, bidding two times within a space of one week and trying to get the deal over the line. Now, the positive, the, the positive, the positive things here is one: you have a full uh, agreement on personal terms, and also you have um, a second bid on the table to uh, to Ajax. And the other thing is that Ajax have not rejected the bid. Ajax are just sitting there, you know. You you know when you're you you are uh, about to receive your salary or when you you've just received your salary and you have so many things to do so you start planning for your salary before you start before you spend so you start planning on what you're going to buy I think that's what West, uh, that's what Ajax are doing they have already you know they, they've already accepted in their hearts that Timber is gonna leave. There is no question about that and they've also accepted that the offer on their table is as much closer to what they were asking for right i don't think timber is going to be the guy that signs uh them new players for a rebuild and i don't think ix need 10 10 20 players for rebuild if they can sell kudus and sell timber that will be uh close to 100 million or maybe close to 80 million they can reinvest that we know how good they are when it comes to you know, sporting talent. I'm very surprised they've not signed Ada Gula yet because that is an Ajax signing. Of course, I want him at Arsenal. Don't, don't, right? But but that's an an Ajax signing. And if if if, if Arsenal lost the rest to sign Ada Gula to Ajax or Dortmund, I wouldn't be fuming. I'd be like, yeah, he's just taken the road that everybody would have you know would have, would have travelled. So for me, um, Arsenal just need to get the right deal out of the way. Uh, it's a smart move. You agree to pay, you agree verbally with Ajax, then you go and push West Ham. Uh, the, the, the rest of the money that we will have, um, that we will have, uh, you know, lef left with from the uh, rice deal will come and complete uh, the, the, the Julian Timber deal. So Arsenal will sign Julian Timber next. That is confirmed. Um, we will be waiting for that full total argument on that side now moises kaisedo is the new kid on the block yes jude bellingham was there before the summer opened up there was a lot of talk by the way about jude arsenal were also prompted to you know when you 
just write AI prompts. I think everyone was just writing AI prompts about Jude Bellingham. We all knew that some huge club was going to sign him, and that was never going to be Arsenal. But he was the kid on the block. Everybody was talking about, you know, Jude, uh, is he going to go to Liverpool? Liverpool fans right there, you know, doing all the artwork in Photoshop. You could have used Canva because we Canva, you don't waste a lot of, of your precious time on a player who's not going to sign. I'm just saying. I'm not even uh, saying that, you know, this video is sponsored by Canva. But I'm only saying that Canva saves time, right? Um, look, we had the, the Manchester City, you know, deal. Manchester City going to sign him. And then we had Manchester United, like the petty club they've become. They just keep on, you know, wishing. So you had, you had those three clubs uh, surely confident he will come to the Premier League and will come back to uh, England because he's English. Tell you what, Real Madrid somehow sniffed him out. Like, they somehow stole the deal um, and they signed him. After, uh, you know, after him signing, it put Declan Rice as the priority midfielder. And that's why you see Bayern were in for him. Because Bayern could have signed Jude Bellingham. They could have used the services of Jude Bellingham. Alongside Kimmich, if you have Jude Bellingham, or if you have Declan Rice, uh, that is a solid midfield, isn't it? So, uh, Bayern came in for him. Man City maybe came, came in for him. Man United have him as a priority. Chelsea would love to have him. But, you know, it, it has always been the price. It has always been the asking price from West Ham. So, just to think about, um, you know, those two players now off the market, Rice and, um, and Jude Bellingham, Moises Caicedo could, could work for another, could be a deal that we see slowly progressing and rising to the 90s. I don't think Kaiser will work for 400. Like, he's, you're not English, come on. But I see that deal rise to the 90s. If Chelsea are willing to, op to, to, to table 70, and Man United are willing to offer 80, someone will be willing to offer 85, and the deal will be obliterated at 90.95. That is my reckoning. But the question is, should Arsenal try to go uh, for Moises Caicedo? And could we try to go for Moises Caicedo after signing Declan Rice? Um, should we? Definitely. Like, definitely. Imagine having Caicedo, Rice, Havers, and Odegaard. I, I don't even care who drops out of the starting 11. As long as I have those four in midfield, um, we are impassable. We are, uh, we would be absolutely, you know, we'll be so strong. Of course, the creativity could be affected because I don't see Declan Rice as your creative man. Um, I think Declan Rice is your laundry. No questions about that. He will be, uh, he will be always chipping in um, with those important goals. And then Kai Havers with the daily goals and uh, the creativity from the magician Martin Odegaard. And of course, our front three have to score more goals. They did score a total of 45 last campaign. But I think Saka can score 20, like Salah, every single season. Come on, Saka. You know you can do this. Martinelli is a 25-goal machine per season. If he stops wasting the chances, he must be, you know, he's, he's going to be a 25-goal machine. If he keeps on wasting those chances, bench him, play Trossard until, you know, Martinelli realizes I'm a 25-goal player. If I can't do that in a season, I don't deserve to be in this team. I'm just kidding. But anyway, uh, so do we, should we go for Caicedo? Absolutely. Like, he's world class and everybody would love to have him. Uh, you would rather have him at Arsenal than at Liverpool, than at Man United, than at Chelsea, than at Tottenham Hotspur as well, um, to be honest. Are Arsenal going to go, go and sign him? Difficult one. Difficult one. Because... Like I said, he's now the new kid on the block. His, his name is the one that we refer to in terms of silver and gold. I don't see how Arsenal spend 105 plus another 90 plus another 60 on three midfielders. Like, yeah, we, we've got the money now, but we are not yet there. Even if, we, even if you're Manchester City, you don't just spend like that. You, the rebuild is going to take some time. This is a phase four signing in Declan Rice. The first five signing could be a striker whose name is going to be absolutely, uh, you know, huge for Arsenal. So, uh, Kaiser, I don't see this one happen. 
uh, now that Rice has come, I think Arsenal would have gone there and obliterated the asking price because we had the money that we were ready to spend on Rice. But uh, I don't see it happen now that Rice is almost an Arsenal player. I don't see that happen. So let's talk about J uh, J J James Maders because Maders, just like Deckers, is on the verge of signing for a club in London. The difference is that Maders will be signing for the club in white and, um, and Deckers will be signing for the club in, uh, in, 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 in red and white. Now, is James Madison going to have a better season than Kai Havers? I'll tell you something. When they said Richarlison would have a better season than uh, J Jesus, I wasn't concerned. Like, I knew Jesus was going to have a better season. You know, Jesus was that kind of trapped parrot at Manchester City. When he came at Arsenal, he saw the light and the cage opened. Like, he, w he became wild and free. And you can see the runs, you can see the, oh, the, the turns, you can see the energy, you can see the vibe. Uh, the, the only thing that Mikelata has got to work with and work on uh, with Gabriel Jesus is XG conversion. You cannot be having an XG of 18, 19 goals per, per, per campaign and you're scoring nine. Like, that is criminal. And, and actually, we have to work on XG of the following players. Gabriel Martinelli, number one, misses a lot of chances. Kai Havertz, number two, misses a lot of chances. And Gabriel Jesus, number three, misses a lot of chances as well. Just like we have done with Bukayo Saka. You know, Saka last season, many people have not noticed but Saka's conversion last season actually improved and I'm not saying in terms of metrics I'm saying when you when you're watching him on the pitch right and he's through on goal his conversion uh, you know has improved massively and not because uh, Saka's got so many goals it's because Saka's conversion rate oh my god this guy was absolutely awful and i was always ranting about his finishing but he's um he's improved a lot really uh suck especially in those you know getting calm at the penalties as well he's, he's you know he's improved a lot so uh you you improve on gabriel Jesus, you, you, you know gabriel Jesus conversion you have a much better player james madison is going to uh, tottenham it hurts me come on damn it I just wanted him on Arsenal. Is it too much to ask for one of my favorite players who are English to play for this club? Is it too much to ask? But I think he will do well under Angel Postecoglou at uh, Spurs. He will, be, he will continue his double figures, trust me. But I think I have as will score more goals than James Madison. I think that troll that Ateta's created for, 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 for Jaka, for Kai Havers, to, you know, that, you know, Thomas Muller role, you're literally tasked with finding space in the penalty area and anticipating where the ball is going to fall and tap into the back of the net. I just see Harvest score more goals. But in terms of creating chances, watch out for Spurs. If they keep Ken, they add Madison. Kuliseski has signed. Humanson could be coming back to his levels. Um, Richarlison might resurrect. I'm not saying they're a threat to Arsenal. They might not be an Arsenal threat for the next five, six years. Well, Man United and Brighton... Well, keep your, you know, keep your eyes open on that one, like Spurs. Why not? See you right in the next one.